Welcome back to Fixing Things. Man, I am sick. I, I gotta get back inside. But I wanna make a video, so bear with me. If I look like I'm not coherent, probably because I am not coherent. Today we're gonna try to attempt to turn a miter box into a metal cutting saw. I think they're called cold cut saws. And the uh, way we're gonna do that is we're gonna get a, carb a special carbide tooth blade that is designed for cutting metal and mount it on a miter box. So I just happen to have three miter boxes that I've acquired over the years. One is my original one that I had way back when. This thing is older than my son. My son is 40 years old. Uh, another one belonged to a friend of mine and another one belonged to Carol's brother. And so we're gonna, out of these three saws, we're gonna choose one to make this cold cut saw. Because while I'm in my shop, it's nice to be able to just take a saw and cut a piece of steel without having to take a sawzall or a plasma cutter or hacksaw or some other cutting device, something I just put on the bench, cut it, and cut it clean, smooth, ready to go. So the only conditions are, is this RPM of the blade. So I got it, my duck's flying down into the pond. Over there on my miter box, the one I used, my cobalt one, this is the one that uh, my, my wife's brother, when he passed away, I, I acquired that one. Um, that one is all plastic, it's really light, and my other two have metal frames. One's aluminum, one's cast iron. My old cast iron one, I had to get working, I had to clean the brushes up on it, and. It's been sitting in the outside shed over here for probably 10 years. And I sprayed some WD-40 and other stuff on it, cleaned it up, and it seems to be running. So RPMs is what we'll be checking on. So let's, let's get this blade up out of its box. I haven't opened it yet. We'll see what we have. So this is exactly how I got it. Slightly crushed. going down fast. I was already going to have this video done, but I had to help Roger with his uh, dimensions on his deck for his footage. It's supposed to be in on the couch. No, I'm not supposed to be out here. My wife finds out. That's why I got to get this done fast so I can get back on the couch and make it look like I've been sitting here all day. There it is. So this is a 10 inch saw blade, just like a miter saw. So what we're going to do is put this 10 inch blade on one of the miter saws. So the key is, all right, let's, let's look at this thing. I, I got I to go get the dogs. All right, the dogs are chasing the duck around. <sighs> Grabbed it by its tail. Chasing it. All right, so let's look at this thing. So it's made for a 10 inch with a one inch hole. Uh, tells you the thickness, that doesn't make no difference to me. And it says RPM minimum is 3250, maximum 3250. So they want this in the 3200 RPM range. For some reason, I was thinking it was more. <coughs> this one cuts up to a quarter inch steel. Forty-five, thirty-two. So on the front, it tells you something different. All right, so it says. Uh, Minimum RPM. 
It says uh, 30, 45. So I don't know if it was repackaged, but this one goes a little faster than uh, some of them. So when you're, when you're looking for the blade, you wanna buy the blade that works on your miter saw. So I wanna use the miter saw that has the slowest cut as possible. So it cuts steel, aluminum, wood, and plastic. So this is all around and cuts steel up to a quarter inch thick. Now the duck flew back up there, 4,500. So let's, let's, let's see what the RPMs are of the, these saws. All right, so this one is 4,800 RPMs with no load on it. That's full speed, 48. So 45 is the zone we're looking for. This one's 48. Let's check these other two saws. It says 49. So this one is 49. So 4,900 RPMs. And it's also a higher horsepower than the rest of them. 48. So this one has a, this saw has a metal housing on it. The Craftsman has a metal housing. That one has a plastic housing. So I think we're gonna use this Trade Master. Whatever that is. So it's a 10 inch compound miter saw. So I think what we'll do is we'll get that trade master. I want to turn that bench there. There's another bench floating around. I got that bench. We'll get that bench there and mount that bench saw on it. That's a compound. All my saws are compound. The other one also has a radial arm on it. Uh, I'm going to save that one for doing wood because I, I do a lot of woodwork and I like that's that's a good saw for woodwork but a compound saw not only is it doing miters on it I can compound the miters like if I'm doing roll cages or something like that or compound cuts where I need to build something in a frame I'm losing it fast I'm going downhill I'll be, I'll be back I gotta, I'll be right back. So I got the saw up on my table that's gonna be for the cutting metal. And let's take a look at this thing. It's built very good quality. Got some instructions. And it has a rotation. And the saw has an arrow on it for the rotation it's supposed to do. It don't look much different than a carbide tip miter saw blade. But it's supposed to be for cutting steel, so. Cutting steel. So this, this blade is made by Evolution. And they have, when you're going on the website or on eBay, they have a bunch of different blades, 10 inch, 14 inch, 18 inch, a bunch of different style blades. You have to search the blade that's gonna work for you. Uh, so that the they do make a saw, an Evolution saw that I seen on the internet uh, that everybody uses. We're gonna test this blade out on this miter saw. All right, let's see if we can't get this blade off.
works. I see a problem already. So the problem we're gonna have is the hole. Obviously, we can't run that blade like that. So it's gonna. Have to come up with a, a cure. It takes the, I think it's a five eighths hole, I think. This is a one inch hole. All right, so we know this hole is too big and I have something the same diameter. It's in there just perfect. So I'm gonna drill this out the same size as this, the shaft. Drill it out the same size as the shaft here. And then grind it down to size. Okay, definitely this is thicker. I'm gonna have to mill it down a little bit more. But there is enough for some variance in on both sides. All right, let me mill that down a little bit more and we'll press that in. All right, I got the spacer put in there. Now let's put it on the saw and see if it works. All right, so always check your rotation. Okay, maybe my hole needs to be a slight a bit bigger. Let me ream my hole out just a hair. All right, I'm gonna stand off to the side here because I don't know what's gonna happen. Blade spinning. It stayed on there. All right, this is a piece of 3 8 rebar. Supposedly is dry cut. Let's see what it'll do.
and it's not hot. That's amazing. Let's check the teeth out. All right, it was a success. Even though the blade RPM is a little bit different than the saw, this saw is at 48, it says at 4,500 on, or 40 something on it. I can't see without my glasses. Yeah, 4,500 on the blade. The saw is at 48, Three, 300 RPMs more. Dude, we got it. Hey. So if you want to look it up, it's an evolution. Uh, the hole, you may find some with the right size hole. We have to do some research. You may find a blade that fits for cutting metal. Um, I did the research for the cold cut blades and there's a couple manufacturers make them. Uh, but you want to use a 10 inch for your miter saw. And it needs to have the right size hole. Mine didn't have the right size, so I don't recommend doing what I did, but that's me. I live dangerously. God's looking out for me, hopefully. Evolution. I just cut a piece of three inch, three eighths inch uh, rebar with it to a blade that's only supposed to cut a quarter inch. I decided I'm gonna cut slower than what I see people do. I see people like Puddin' and some of those guys, man, they cut through metal like it's going out of style. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a good project right there. That's something you can do yourself. Just check your RPM. Some, some of your binder boxes are fast, real fast. So if you got a slow moving miter saw, get you one of these Evolution blades, Dude, you're cutting steel. People say, oh, I can do all that with the with the 5 8 inch grinder or the four and a half inch grinder. Yeah, you can. And you're cutting a, a four by, a two by four by quarter inch piece of steel and your cuts are probably gonna be doing the wobbly stuff and everything on this. I could do angle cuts. I could do compound miters on stuff I can build on my framework and stuff like that. I, I need something like this. You do too. God bless you. You see that thing? You see that thing? I'll see you on the next one to fix it then. Thank uh you. -huh.